tell us about Chariot and your character in the film. Yeah, so Chariot is um, a pretty trippy movie, uh, but it's it's about this this guy who is having this recurring dream, and he goes to this sleep doctor to figure it out, and uh, it ba- it's basically about reincarnation and sort of our past lives and the implications of that on our current lives and maybe our future lives and whether love can like transcend time and place and you know can we find our lovers in other lives you know past and present and uh and future and so obviously those are really heady topics but it's told in a very uh this like going on like a I don't know, like a David Lynchian sort of ride, you know, mm-hmm. where it's more about how the movie makes you feel than, than the plot of it, you know, because when, when you get to the end, you'll realize that everything that you thought was is a little bit different based on what happens. And so you have to go back and, and rewatch and peel back the layers. And so, you know, yeah. I go to this next question, but you know, Adam has said one of his goals with this film was to provoke emotions. What was your initial feelings you had after you read the script? Yeah, I, I agree with that. It was um, the way the movie, well, the way the script made me feel when I finished reading it was this sort of like, uh, it's like when, when you wake up from a, a weird dream that you had, you know, and, and I love that quality of that sort of magical realism or surrealism and it's uh, it was just really unique, and especially coming out of the pandemic, uh, it was such a weird time. Or coming out of twenty twenty, I should say, <laughs> pandemic still obviously around. Um, but it, I just to do something sort of dark and weird just felt so appropriate, um, and yeah, and it was a perfect opportunity to kind of dive into a sort of depressed guy who uh, had you know, this thing that he had to, couldn't figure out and it was affecting his whole life. And, and so it was sort of like helping him through that. I was helping myself through certain mm. things that had gone on in the past year. And it was a great experience, you know? You're getting to start opposite a legend like John Malkovich who really immerses himself into a character. What was that collaboration like working with him? It was, I mean, I was a little intimidated at first, obviously, but uh, that went away pretty immediately. Um, because he's just so generous and and when it gets down to like the nitty-gritty and like talking about a scene and rehearsing and uh, we see eye to eye on all those things you know and so it was just like you know he treated me as a peer and that was just like the most um, gratifying thing is uh, you know it's the you know going from being nervous to working with one of your idols to then being like you know we're just co-workers and we're making each other laugh in between takes. And, you know, he's a very playful actor and thinking constantly trying to surprise you. And, uh, you know, it was a joy just to watch him work. You've worked on projects of all sizes. What is it about independent filmmaking that excites you as a creative? I think it's just the, the camaraderie between everyone. You feel like you are, you have a real hand in shaping what you're making. And sometimes you don't feel that way on a, on a big movie. Sometimes you just feel like you're a uh, cog in the machine. It's all, it can be a little impersonal when you're on a big, big movie and you're sort of just kind of on your own. And um, on a movie like this, it's everyone feels like you're coming together and you're, you create a little family for the short time that you're together working. And, um, you know, I, I, for that reason, I love independent films, you know. And this is your first major venture into the sci-fi genre. Did anything surprise you about the experience? What was the, the biggest takeaway? Oh, uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, I don't really think of things in terms of like, oh, I haven't done this genre yet. Now I got to go cross that off the checklist. But, um, but I think subconsciously when I'm deciding what movie to do, I was, I, you know, I'm like, well, well, I haven't done anything quite like this. And just trying to find a new version of myself to, to play on screen and um, and yeah, like you said, I, I hadn't done anything like this. And I, I was always inspired by David Lynch movies and, um, you know, or like the or older David Fincher movies, you know, the just the sort of noir world that's a little dark and a little depressing, but, um, but it's sort of whimsical and, and surreal as well. And that, uh, yeah, and I just wanted to, sort of immerse myself in that. 
goes, like you were saying, your character goes on this wild ride throughout the film. As an actor, how did you create this space for yourself to dive into kind of those more emotional moments? Um, well, like I said before, that 2020 was such a weird, dark year for a lot of people, but everyone has their own reasons, I think. And, um, and, and I don't know, I was just feeling like I wanted to, I was feeling very emotional and a lot of changes had happened in my life and, um, and relationship changes. And I just knew that I had a lot to, to give. And um, so, you know, as an actor, like that's the best way to, you know, to be able to do that. And so um, when this came along, it just felt like uh, kind of the perfect thing. And I felt like I was in a similar place to, to Harrison, you know, cause he's just so lost. And I feel like he was having struggling you know, in his career and his relationships because of this dream and this obsession that he had with his dream. So yeah, I, I just related to him in that way, I guess. Uh, one of the beautiful things about art is uh, its ability to provoke conversation. And this film definitely does that. What do you hope audiences take away after they see it when it drops on Friday? I, I mean, I just hope that they keep an open mind and just, um, uh, yeah, I hope that they're, um, you know, able to pick up on certain things throughout the story. And I hope they're just looking for like sort of a trippy, dark, um, cerebral ride. And cause that's what it is really with a couple of outstanding uh, supporting performances Well, more than a couple really like you gotta include Scout Taylor Compton who plays two characters, yeah. Vernon Davis, who is an incredible actor, uh, you know and um, obviously Rose and John those are the reasons to watch really. It's just them, everyone goes balls to the wall in this movie performance wise. So it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Is there a particular scene that you're really excited for your fans to see? Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm excited for them to see the whole thing. I'm, I'm excited to see people, um, for, to see, for people to see me work with John Malkovich. I'm excited for people to see, um, Rosa Salazar's scene where she's doing an audition tape, you know, mm -hmm. which is a very meta thing for a lot of actors because we do those all the time. Um, so maybe some aspiring actors out there will uh, enjoy that scene as well. But a final question for you. Besides this film, where can fans see you next? Um, well, uh, later this year, uh, I have a movie coming out called About Fate that will be starring myself and Emma Roberts. And it's a romantic comedy which I've never really done like a full on romantic comedy like that. And um, I'm really excited because I think it's gonna be very good. And then um, actually Rose and I appear, um, we don't have a huge part, but in Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, um, the A24 is releasing this summer. Um, so you can catch us in that. And then, um, yeah, and I, I, yeah, that's really all I can talk about so far, but yeah.